Victor's Assembly Church is located along River Road at former Casino Cinema near Kenya Uniform Distributors. To give you offerings, send through our impersonal number 0722 712 918. Welcome somebody next to you and tell them I'm so blessed that you're standing next to me. I sense the anointing around you. It's affecting my life. It's affecting my life. Amen. Are you ready as you begin the topic? I shall not live by the mercies of men. I shall live by the tender mercies of God. The Bible says that his mercies are new every, every morning. God will make his mercy available for us. Kindly give me to Isaiah 26 and verse 9 as we stand up in the reading of the word of God. Isaiah 26 and verse 9. And remember coming Friday from 6 to 8 p.m. is our Kegosho Express service. Amen. We will be having the divine encounter band. They will be here. And of course, Pastor Tumaini will also be part of us. And many more wonderful summits that are going to be here. It's going to be a night of just praising and worshiping God. So make sure that you make time. And this week is our praise week. So make sure in everything you do, put some music and give God glory. Because as we praise him, great things will happen for us. Let's all read the word of God together. Isaiah 26 verse 9. With my soul, I have desired you in the night. Yes, my spirit within me. For I seek you early. For when your judgments are in the earth, the inhabitants of the world will learn righteousness. With my soul have I desired you in the night. There will be those seasons in your life that will be night seasons. Those seasons where darkness will be there. And your heart will be yearning for a change. And the Bible is saying that in those moments of the night, I sought you early. I will seek you early. Why? For when your judgments are in the earth, in the earth, somebody say earth. The inhabitants of the world, the world is a system. Earth is nature. Are you hearing me? So the person is saying, Isaiah is saying, that when there is judgment upon the world and the worldly system, People will run righteousness. There are dimensions of increase and promotion you will never attain until the judgments of God are in your world. And this is a day that we are going to command our night season. They must come to an end by the judgments of God. Lift up your hands and say, by your judgment, O God. Remove the yoke of the wicked from the affairs of my life. By your judgment, O God. Let the wicked learn righteousness as you defend me. Amen. Psalm 27 verse 2 and verse 3. Psalm 27 from verse 2 and verse 3. We read it together uh, in Jesus' name. Psalm 27 verse 2 to verse 3. Let's all read together. When the wicked came against me. Give me the next verse. Though an army may encamp against me, my heart shall not fear. Though war may arise against me, in this I will be confident. Give me verse 4. One thing that I will seek, that I may dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life, to behold the beauty of the Lord and to inquire in his temple. You may have your seat in the presence of God. For you to be Delivered from the yoke and the mercy of men, you need a desire. A desire to come out. A desire that will push you to seek God early until you get him. So what do you mean? What do we mean when we say that you will refuse to live by the mercies of men? It means that you refuse to operate in constant frustrations in relationships. Did you hear me? I told you even as you write, let's be together. Amen. Let's be together. Glory be to God. Let's be together. There is a video broadcast. You can always refer to it. So let's talk. That, we, that when we say that we refuse to live by the masses of men, is that we are refusing to live in 
constant frustration in the area of relationships. There will be a smooth flow. There will be peace in relationships. We refuse to live under, by the masses of men. The second thing we are saying is that we are refusing to operate under closed heavens. Hard heavens. Deuteronomy 28 and verse 23 says that the earth beneath you shall be brass and the heavens shall be, let's, let's get that Deuteronomy 28 and verse 23 uh, I'll appreciate. And your heavens over your head shall be bronze and the earth under you shall be iron. It means that when you're living by the masses of men, it means that there is nothing coming from heaven and there is nothing coming from the earth. And that is why we need to judge the systems of the world because favor must answer for you in Jesus' name. I can't hear your amen. It means that when you're living by the masses of men, you operate in hard grounds where there is no mercy, where there is no help, where there is no support, where there is nobody to tell you uh, to, to sympathize with you and your effort. It means that when you're living by the masses of men, there will be helpers, but they are poisoned helpers. Somebody say poisoned helpers. People that want to help you, but there is a poison that has entered them. They look at you and they are suspicious. They want to help you, but their hands are tied. They want to go all the way for you, but there is a voice or there will be an, a, 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 a power that is poisoning your helpers. So as we declare that we are not going to live by the masses of men, then we will see God that we may live by his masses. For his masses are new every morning. So this category of men we are talking about, we are not talking about a wife that is submitted to her husband. We are not talking of a good member that is under submission to his man of God. We are not talking about an employee who regards their boss carefully and is submitted to the authority. That is a godly system. We are talking of an abnormal system where instead of you walking in dominion, you are being dominated. And God never created you to endure the yoke of slavery. I can't hear your amen. amen. It means that when you are under this man, these are the category of men or the spirits that operate in this man that we are talking about that should never be uh, by, live by their mercy. Men that threaten and boast over your destiny. People that threaten and boast over your, over your destiny. They tell you, we will see how far you will go. Ah, we will bring you down. They boast over your children. They say you have given birth to them, but we will render them powerless. We are talking of people that tell you, go to church or you care, but you must come and bow to me. Those are the people we are saying today, we are not living by their mercy. Jehovah will raise a standard against them in the name of Jesus. That's why the Bible says that when the enemy comes in like a flood, he raises a standard against the enemy. The devil does not work alone. There are men he chooses to use. And anybody in that category that has decided that they are going to be used against your staff to sh so that you may not shine, we are declaring we are rising above them. We are accessing higher mercy. These are category of people that operate with terrible anger towards you. Terrible anger towards you. In the gorgeous woman, so I've had an experience where I've, I've interviewed women and I've heard many things. I've had innocent women that are living under terrible anger of ruthless men that do not have any mercy or any pity towards them. And when they leave them and marry another person, they do not have that similar kind of anger towards them. They tell you that this is a person that the enemy has isolated and identified a slave master to put them under terrible anger and they are afraid of coming out. But I came to declare if there is any one of you that is operating under the terrible uh, anger of men, uh, it shall be like David. Uh, let me fall in the hands of God because in the hands of God there, there is mercy. May you fall in the hands of God. I can't hear your amen. Open your mouth and say, Oh God, I submit myself to your tender masses. I withdraw my star from the masses of men. Because when a man shows you mercy, they don't show you mercy for nothing. Mm -mm. There is always a catch. There is always a return that they are looking for. When you're living under these men, they are like ranging spirits that are insatiable in appetite. They are ranging spirits. They are range and their anger towards you. Their desire to destroy you is insatiable. They will never be happy until they see you buried. These are the people who keep looking for news to hear where the tragedy has located you that they may laugh. 
These are the people who keep looking around to hear whether your marriage is in crisis that they may say they have been vindicated. I pray that Jehovah God will not put you under subjection to that man. Amen. I can't hear your amen. amen. These are people that speak strange words to you. Strange words. And you wonder where they're coming from. They speak to you strange words. And they say, try all that you care. But I tell you, you I will have the final say. These are the people who have confidence to tell you. Like the way Goliath spoke to David. That today I am going to give your flesh to the birds of the air. It means they have an uncommon confidence to declare strange and evil words against you. I came to declare their confidence shall be shattered. Their words shall be wasted. Their imagination shall be frustrated. If you are in agreement, shout the loudest. Amen. These are people that are sponsored by violent spirit. They, they program tragedy. Program misfortunes, program bloodshed, many sicknesses that you cannot trace where they are coming from and where they are going. Where you find you have multiples of calamities. Where you find you have multiples of, of blessings that are, are coming to your life and disappear so fast. It is because you are living by the masses of men. But we are removing ourselves from there. You will not live under the mercy of doctors. Ha! Rakata bazakata. You will not live under the mercy of your employer as much as they have employed you. God will give you seven open doors before you. I can't hear you. I can't hear you. Anybody threatening you that if you leave you, they will come, you will go back to them begging. I declare you are not a beggar in the market of life. For the Bible says that I was young and now I'm old. I've never seen the righteous forsaken. No, he sit begging for bread. Whoever told you that the way you left them, you will come begging for mercy. You will fall into the tender mercies of God. You are not going to become a beggar of bread. You are not going to become a beggar of promotion. You will not sell your body to get promotion. Whoever is telling you unless you compromise, they will not promote you to hell with their promotion. I will not subject myself like Joseph said that I will not subject myself to this system of the world. I belong to the Lord. Let me go to prison with my head high than remain in promotion when I'm, 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 I'm living by the masses of men. I can't hear your amen. Somebody say, I refuse to live by the masses of men. Say, Kuishi kwa huruma ya mwanadamu ya yote anakusaidia kwa sababu anakuhurumia wakati utasaidika huruma zao zitaisha but what a mighty God we serve when his tender mercies are upon you even when you are lifted he still has mercy towards you ay 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 his mercies is from everlasting are you hearing me lift both of your voice i mean your spiritual voice and your mouth, and I want you to say, Oh, violent spirits, poisoning my helpers of destiny to withdraw their help from me. Hear the word of God, let the judgment of God locate you. In whose name do we pray? Shout three powerful amens in the balcony. I say in the balcony, shout three powerful amen. 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 Downstairs, let me hear your powerful three amen. 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 In Jesus' name do we pray. This kind of man we are talking about that you will not serve by, live by their masses are people that on an evil assignment to make sure that you remain down. Are we communicating? People on an evil side to make sure that even if your children go to school, they will never get employed. And do you know Satan does not work without a physical contact? Huh? In business, we talk about networking. Hello? Satan cannot execute his plan against you unless he has a network. What we are doing in this service is that that anti mercy network we are destroying it in the name of Jesus. That network that do, do you know man, most of the time man does not show you mercy unless you become vulnerable to them. Have you ever seen that for people to get GoFundMe or to get funded in social media, there has to be a sorrow attached to a story for money to come out. You will not be among those candidates. You will not be a beggar of mercy of men. 
I can't hear your amen. amen. What we do is good, and it is good for a time. But when you know better, I better fall into the hands of God. Amen. There is mercy, amen. everlasting mercy amen. that endures forever. Amen. Haven't you seen people after they help you and you come out, they will keep reminding you, remember you are broke. Huh? We are the ones that help you. But there is no time God will ever take a notebook and remind you what he has done. He will expect you to remind him what he has done in thanksgiving. That is why jikumbushage vile mungu wame kutendea. Vile jirani yako, zoea kujikumbusha vile mungu wame kutendea. Zoea kujikumbusha, zoea kujikumbusha. It is you to remind yourself. Because God will never count for you what he has done. If he begins to count, he will disable you. Huh? Ata kudisable. Because everything about you is from him. Are we communicating? When we talk about these men that we are refusing to live by their masses, these are people that swallow victory and destiny. Swallow victory and destiny. Swallow victory and destiny. These are people when they see you excited when God blesses you. Woo! They become darker than charcoal. Their eyes begin to roll like the eyes of a chameleon. Because they are unhappy about your blessing. There are people who would wish to see you in tatters broken, you know, crushed than see you on your mountain top. There are people who feel like they want to die if they hear your name mentioned positively. Am I talking to real people here? Ha! Huh. That world is so real for me. So real. It's so real. I pray that you may make it in every area of your life. Because right now, if you say you have no enemies, it is because you are going nowhere. If your destiny is not attracting a fight, I realize your destiny is going nowhere. If there is no contention about who you are, then I know your destiny is not worth fighting for. Because there is nothing that will come out of it. But I know the plans that he has for me. Plans of good and not of evil. To give me a future and an expected end. For God to say I have a plan for you for good and not for evil, it means that there is evil. Uh-uh. And those are the people we are saying you will not be subjected to them. Pharaoh will never locate your star. Herod will never locate your star. The Midianites will never hunt your star. The Amalekites, the Hittites, the Jebusites, all the giants we talked about, none of them shall be and your master. You will be their master in Jesus' name. That's why I said I give you power and authority over all powers of darkness. And now them shall hurt you. It means that you are meant for dominion. You are created to dominate. You are created to be on top. If there is somebody they should call sir, it is you. If there is somebody they should call madam, it is you. Magadabo shakata. And it is not by the work you do as who you are. Ah. Ah. Don't you remember? A slave. A prisoner. Somebody in exile called Joseph. But the king had no solution. But a slave and a prisoner is the one that became second in command. It is not because of his status then. It was who he was. My assignment in this service is to, de to, to remove your star and to polish your star. And so that it may not be subjected to the masses of men. Let them put you in prison, but you will still be a dreamer. Huh? Let them put you in the lion's den, but you will still be Daniel. The man that walks with God. Huh? Let them put you in, the, in, in a burning bush. But I cannot tell you that you will still be the Moses, the deliverer of the children of Israel. Huh? Let them put you in the fire like Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. But even in the fire, you are still on top of things. Huh? You still refuse to bow to the system. Huh? I can to declare you will not bow to the system of your family. You will not bow to the system of poverty. You will not bow to systems of divorce and anti-marriage. Huh? I raise you on top. Huh? Shout it! Yeah! demonic systems because you are not supposed to bow have your seat there will be many satanic attempts to make you live by the masses of men Ah, you will be enticed you will be forced you will be coerced but once you know how to identify you better go home hungry and still remain by the masses of God and be fed and full and fat and men are the ones calling shots for you 
Because when their mercy has expired, because it has expired in date, you'll be left on your own. Dasha kuitire mohaka, kuono mode chore omoyo, inya wage shoka geaku, ne watoki nye tiaha, ti darowe beneza. The song is saying that your masses have no end. They are from everlasting to everlasting. Seeing it is us that are here, truly your masses are everlasting to everlasting. The masses of God will take you to the next level. You don't have to compromise for you to be promoted. Whoever promotes people when he feels like you are not in that category. Promotion does not come from the east or the west. It comes from the father above. In whom there is no valuableness, no shadow of turning. He's the God that reigns on the wicked and he reigns on the righteous. He's the God of all seasons. He does not see any mountain or valley when it comes to fight for you. I better remain under the masses of God than be a celebrity of the mercy of men. What when Isaac kukubariki wa kikuhurumia? But ukisaidika, they will begin now seeing how they helped you. And they will desire you bring back what they gave you. Haven't you seen when the community educates you? When you go so far away, they expect you to come back and do something for community. But when God helps you, he does not pull your thing that you must serve me. You serve him when you want. And he will not go telling people, see how I've helped you. Uh -uh, uh -uh, uh -uh. Now, and I'm not saying people will not help you, but let people help you only because the mercy of God has located you and he has instilled a liking in the hearts of men towards you. Amen. And do you know people don't have to like you to help you? Pharaoh did not like the children of Israel. He did it by fire, by force. Ah, I can't hear your amen. Tell you ever by fire, by force. Pharaoh will give you what belongs to you. People don't have to like you. To bless you. They don't. I have seen blessings that came. From Exodus. To the wilderness. The Egyptians gave the children of Israel the gold and silver. Not because they liked them. They were afraid of them. When you enjoy God's masses. The fear of men towards you. They will drop things for you. There are people who will drop blessings because they are afraid of dealing with you. There are people who vacate positions because they don't know how to face you. <laughs> ah! Ah, I don't like the way you are saying amen! Kuna mungangano itaisha kwa sababu people cannot tolerate your presence. Because when you carry God, people that practice other principles other than principles of the kingdom, they have to bow to you. That is a godly way. That's a godly way. The wicked must bow before the righteous, not vice versa. These are organized attackers. These people we are saying living by the mass. Organized attackers. They trouble you when you are young. They, they, they sponsor household pursuers, like Joseph. They pursue you from the household. Ah, they, they put a spirit in, in your brothers. They put you and they sell you out to slavery. After they sell you now, they hand you over to Potiphar. Potiphar now wants is a rapist <laughs> and hands you over. After that, you are handed over to prison. Were it not for the masses of God, Joseph would have died. Anybody that blesses you, let them not imagine they are doing you a favor. You have found favor with God. Are we communicating? And I'm not sponsoring arrogance. I'm only stating a fact. So that when people help you, say thank you to them, but say thank you to God first. Amen. Unless the Lord helps you, who can help? Unless the Lord builds a house, those who build, build in vain. Even you, you cannot take credit for what you have accomplished. It is his help. It is his help. It is his help. When you are living by the masses of men, you don't enjoy progress. These are the symptoms, no progress at all. When you look at your life, you're mark timing. Somebody say, I refuse to mark time. No, that one you don't have to write. Somebody say, I refuse to mark time. I think I will ban you from carrying books. The way you are using them, you're overusing them. Hallelujah. Somebody say, I refuse to mark. <laughs> Lift up your hands and say, and the power causing me to mark time in business and in life. 
Your time is up. Let me go. Let me go. Let me go. Now look here. We say number two, constant frustration in relationships. That everywhere you are, you face rejection without application. Even before people talk to you, you look like a suspect. I was hearing of something today. Uh, somebody was talking with Bishop. And somebody was telling Bishop about, they were catching up about a particular family that they know. Three brothers were all killed on suspicion that they were armed robbers in different occasions. One of them was killed in the market, another one was killed in another town, another, and they were not together. And all of them were killed because somebody suspected they were thieves. Any mark that makes people hate you, that mark must disappear. Amen. Lift up your hands and say, any evil mark of rejection Amen. placed on my head by evil powers, Amen. by the power in the blood of Jesus, disappear! Amen. Disappear! Pray for yourself one minute. In Jesus' name do we pray. We talked about closed heavens and had, and your heavens over your head shall be bronze, and the earth which under you shall be up. And we also talked about poisoned helpers. So what gives what makes us live by the masses of men? There are five good reasons. And not under the masses of God. I've told you about the cruelty you endure because of men. Poisoned helpers, no progress, frustration in relationship. That you have to work for what is automatic. Promotion comes from God. But for you, you are given a condition. For you to be promoted, you must bribe. And if you don't bribe, you remain in the same place. Ah, the devil is a liar. Even in this Kenya where corruption is rampant, you shall succeed in Jesus' name. You will not live by the masses of the boss ahead of you. Whoever is refusing to sign your appraisal, in the name of Jesus, let them go that it may be signed. Ah, I can't hear your amen. Do you know there are people who say over their dead body, you will never succeed in that company. Let them die that you may rise. It is only fair that way. It is only fair that way, because heaven is committed to your star shining. In case you are not serious, you will not say amen. If you are serious about the shining of your star, you shout the better amen. amen. So number one, when there is a legal claim over your life and destiny. Men rule over you. You live under the rod of men. You live a life by the masses of men when there is a legal claim over your life. Isaiah 49 Verse 24, 25 says, shall the prey be taken out of, of the mighty? It says, yes, even the captives of the mighty, they shall be set free. It means that it is possible to be taken captive by the mighty. Somebody say, I must be free in Jesus' name. <laughs> I have told you about before about the story of Esau. Esau was a legal captive because what he did, he disregarded his birthright and he gave it over to Jacob. And in the time when he should have been living a man that is free, he was told that only when you get rested shall you break the yoke of your brother, the yoke of men, from your neck. The Bible says, that it is because he sold his birthright. There are many of us that come from generations of people that had no regard for their birthright. They sold their birthright to witch doctors. They sold their birthright to many other altars. But we are declaring in the name of Jesus, we are getting back our shining. We are getting back our legal claim. Lift up your voice and say, by the power in the blood of Jesus, I buy back my legal rights to inherit to prosper and to live by the favor of God. In whose name do we pray? It means that when there is a legal ground, there was an evil transaction that happened and gave Satan right to make you live under the mass, by the masses of men. For instance, if you do the, the study of like US, all the black Americans you see there, their forefathers were slaves that were captured by force. And if you go to places like Boston, you can see where slaves were being sold. There were slaves auction. It is only during the time of Obama that we saw the first son descendant of a slave rise to power. 
It is in the time of Trump that the first sergeant, you know, major commander in chief of the police forces has been a black man in an, in a, in an economy and a, and a democracy of over 200 years. It is the first time. What did the devil have? A legal claim. A legal claim. Any legal claim that Satan has over marriages in your generation, it must be destroyed in the name of Jesus. Any legal claim Satan has over your money, that's why your money can never multiply. Because Satan has a legal claim. He says, I bought their money. Are you hearing me? There are people, even if you try, if you put live animals, you know, living animals, not a butchery, I'm talking of living animals, they can never survive in your land. Because there is a legal claim over every living thing in your family. But we are getting our rights back. I say we are getting our rights back. Am, am I communicating? Am I communicating? Most of the times, even if you read history, that when, when communities used to raid, they used to raid goats, cows, and women. Eh? So in Kikuyu land, you will find names of people that were raided from the Maasai. That's why Masai, Kikuyu and Maasai share names. You go to Pokot and Kalenjin, they share names. Why? Because they used to be raiders. Are we communicating? So when the raiding is done, for peace to come, they will come into an agreement. And they make claims and covenants. So you are there innocently saying, I, 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 come, I, come, in the name of Jesus, I come. No power can touch me. <laughs> the devil opens the archives. 1,000 years ago, this is what we made as a testament. Those covenants must be broken. I said those covenants must be broken. I said those covenants must be broken. Maybe because we come from polygamous backgrounds. Polygamous backgrounds, and that's a fact. It's very hard for you to move three generations back and not find that your family was polygamous. Maybe when the last wife was being married, she went and got married and realized that she had no space. Or maybe most likely the first wife would feel threatened and her children had been denied space and would go to a witch doctor and say, I am making a covenant with you. I will give you my firstborn as long as you protect my rights in this house. So you come there from the first wife. Blood of Jesus, no power can touch you. Satan, you're alive. But no matter how hard you try, born again and spirit filled, you are living by the masses of men. Masses shall come back. I don't know whether you're hearing me. And especially when it comes to the area of marriage, where you find, as a lady, you come to a place where you, you entered auction, where now you are no longer marriable. They are now looking for you. <laughs> Somebody say, my life is not for sale. <laughs> so if you come at you think, you know, people are taking this lightly, but these things are real. Where you come to a place where they are looking for who, who, who among the men has their wife died. So that you can be given for auction. And whoever they get for you, you will go. It is living by the mercy. The power of your choice must be restored. Amen. My grandmother used to tell me, and she told me, she used to be very bitter. She was the fourth wife of my grandfather, who I never met because he was old. And she said she was a very quiet girl. And Kitambo, they used to catch them in the farm. So if you're interested in a particular girl, you will get her by force and put her in the home as long as the man could afford cows and goats. Have you, have you read your history? See you yes. So my grandmother always used to say, I used to hate that Kimoduri. I didn't like him. Yeah, I didn't like him. Your marriage shall not be an auction. Yes. I can't hear your amen. Yes. Hey, yeah. And she will say that. And she will say, I, I didn't like that. I wish we had how she used to describe my grandfather. We never missed him. You know, there is a way your grand. <laughs> Are you getting me? Where they describe to you how your grandfather was until you say, it's good he's not around. I don't need to miss such a man. We say, hey, we mama, alikuwa na fujo. Lakini, ile kitu mimi ya jawai ni chapa. Kwa sabu hata kitua fujo nilikuwa na nyamaza. Akitaka chakula na pika. Na weka hapo. And true to the word, when inheritance was being, my, my dad is among the youngest wives, yet he carried all the inheritance. You are coming out. Amen. You are coming out. Amen. Somebody say, I refuse, I refuse. To, be to be subjected to the mercy of men. Oh God, oh God. give me back my rights, me back my rights. To, be happy. to be happy. 
Are we communicating? There are, may, there are like four, five, four more results. The other one is uh, the law of seed time and harvest. You sow seeds, you have to get a return. Number three, where you get unjust gains. Conmanship. When you're a conman, a time will come when you are, after you are done conning, mercy will be withdrawn. After you are done with your calculations, then mercy will be removed. Number four, broken vows. And number five, occultic involvement. Because of time, I will deal that with that in the third service. Kindly close your books and stand up on your feet as we pray. Those who are watching us online, in case we are back online, just pray with us. Everybody stand up on your feet. Okay, sit down. I meant, let us stand up on our feet. Okay, not yet. Okay, sit down, church. Praise be to God. Fold your notebooks. Fold your notebooks. Are you ready now? Mm, everybody sit down. Amen. Are you ready now, church? Let's rise up on our feet in Jesus' name. Now that's good. Now celebrate Jesus in the house. Hey, hey. Lift up both of your hands and say, Any demonic power, any evil covenant, sacrifice, or demand, that stole my rights to enjoy the mercy of God. Hear the word of the Lord. Evil power, evil altar, evil covenant, evil demand. Lose me and let me go. In the name of Jesus, lose me and let me go. 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 You better pray with authority. In Jesus' name do we pray. The last prayer we'll pray is that every mark of cruelty, every mark of rejection, mark of isolation on your forehead from evil altars, it must disappear. Amen. Haven't you known that there are people, if they appear anywhere without saying a word, they are rejected. Without even saying who they are, they are already reduced to minimum and people begin to ignore them. It is not just automatic. It is an evil mark of men dominating you. You being rendered useless, non-important. That power must let you go. You will stand out in your generation. I can't hear your amen. You will stand out in your world. And that is what the enemy does. That's why the story of Daniel is very important. That even after they ate greens, by the time they were put in line, they came out better. They came out more handsome, more stronger. That is why in the beauty contest, Esther came out as the best. In the Goliath and Saul experience, because David had the masses of God, no wonder he's the man that wrote about the masses of God most. When he entered there, though he was the shortest, he became the best. You are becoming the best among your equals. I still can't hear your amen. You are becoming the best among your fathers and mothers children. Not by power or by might but by the Spirit of God. Amen. There was a mark that was placed on Cain that wherever you go, you cannot kill him. But he is a little man. He's an endangered man. He's a man that carries cruelty in his eyes. Mm. We are going to pray that by the blood of Jesus. Let every mark of isolation, of cruelty, of rejection, pursuing my life, in the go shut up, da, 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 be erased right now. Wherever you go, favor shall answer. Wherever you go, blessings will be magnetized. Wherever you go, people shall call you blessed. Are you ready to pray? Lift your hands and say, every mark of cruelty, isolation and rejection, written on my forehead, by my ancestors, by evil altars, by the blood of Jesus, disappear, 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 by the blood of Jesus, disappear. Any mark of cruelty, any mark of isolation, any mark of torment upon my forehead, wherever I go, be erased by the power in the blood of Jesus. I wish you can erase it by the blood. There is no other blood that is superior than the blood of Jesus. There is no other power that is superior than the power in the name of Jesus. 
I shall not be ignored in the marketplace. I shall not be delegated to a position of no importance. I claim back my rights to be loved. I claim back my rights to be heard. In the name of Jesus. In Jesus' name do we pray. Let me add you one more prayer point. Lift up both of your hands and say, Heavenly Father. Heavenly Father. In the name of Jesus Christ. Silence every voice. The sales mean negatively before men. Pray the prayer. My Father, my Father. Silence every negative voice. The sales mean negatively before men. Your time is up in Jesus' name. My father, my father, silence every voice. The sales mean negatively. But personally, I've been a lawbreaker of traffic several times. I'm confessing, including yesterday. Nikuwa na ujanja zangu tu. So I decided that where I was going, I felt it's too far. So I turned, I put hazard. You know how criminal we can be when we are driving. So nikaeka hazard. Unajua mtu, the Bible says, confess your sin to Anna, that you may be healed. Amen. So I decided to do I did not know that the policeman in the roundabout along Bunyan Road was watching. So I turned very nice. I pretended I was on hazard, and then I turned. Then he got me. Madam, when you were turning, I saw you. <laughs> <laughs> and you know the first thing you do when you are caught? You pretend you don't understand. See, hello, we see, hello. <laughs> we talked, we started talking about the economy of Kenya. He was very fierce. By the time he got me. Then he realized, I don't know what happened when he, we met face to face. To Kanza Kwangia Mamboya economy, can be a madam, when the now pale hakuna kutan. You shall be likable. And I'm not encouraging you to break the law, but in case you break the law. That's what the Bible says. That in case you see we have an advocate with it. The other day, I was driving somewhere. God knows I was really driving fast. In a highway of 110, I was kidu hapo, not so much, around 140, hapo, karibu 150. And you know the time you when you are really going. And so, I was caught. My name was to on top of the list. The name of the car. <laughs> when I opened the window, he, he first of all did not check me. He checked the name. Alianza <laughs> kucheka. You know how they catch you? <laughs> Policemen are not bad. They don't just stop you. Let us not pretend they are bad. I was a criminal at that time. <laughs> then he turned his face and said, Ha! Ah! And it was very early in the morning. It was around, maybe around 5.30 a.m. So he told me, Eh, Muchungaji, Naenda wapi? Asabu nimekuona, siku yangu imeanza vizuri. Ubalikiwe. <laughs> Nilikuwa naona wanaume wakitoa jasho, wakienda hivyo. But for me, it was easy. So when you are praying that whatever is in me, that makes people cruel, that you do a small mistake, you cannot be forgiven. And others have done major mistakes than you. Na wako free. Si kimenyano, ni kamaka. Tell me about any mark of cruelty, disfavor that is upon you, whether inherited or acquired. 
it must disappear. In whose name? In whose name? Pokea sura ya kupendeka. Pokea sura inaka huruma. Na siku hurumiwa kwa sababu uko na shida, unahurumiwa kwa sababu tu unakaa favorable. Ah. Celebrate as you celebrate that the mercy of God locate you. Let the mercy of God locate you. Thank you, Lord. I can't tell you how many, and this mercy knows no boundaries. When God shows you mercy, even the most cruel will be tender towards you. What you need is the tenderness of men that is awakened by the mercy of God. Not the mercy of men that is men that you are supposed to live when they say. You are supposed to jump how high when they say how high. You shall not be a subject. You shall not be a slave. I remember one time we were catching a flight. And all of us, there were a few black people because it's a, I think it was an Egypt air. You rarely have many black people using Egypt air. So you had a stopover at Cairo. By the time we were stopping over to get to catch an airplane, all the other people that were black were pulled aside. For me, they talked to me in Egyptian. Only God knows I'm not white. I don't like the way you are clapping. I am not anywhere near white. But they talk to me. You know that? I am not anywhere near white. But they talk to me. I felt for them. But when you carry the tender masses, even in Egypt, you will pass. I literally passed in Egypt. Literally. <laughs> May the tender masses of God satisfy you. Lift your voice and tell God, satisfy me early with your mercy, O oh God. That when I go before men, they will treat me with dignity. Satisfy me early with your mercy, O oh God. I will seek you early. Lara will shatter. Satisfy me early with your mercy. I need your mercy in my life. I need your mercy in my life. I need your tender mercy to work for me. To call him in Jesus' name we pray. Kindly package your offering, your package, uh, your tithe, your Rehoboth. Remember, we are having a Rehoboth a fundraiser on the April 4th. Make sure that you have your package ready because we want to build the house of God. Uh, this coming Sunday, I mean coming Friday, is our Kegosho Express evening. From 6 to 8, we'll be praising and worshiping God. Only the praise and worship are happy. Because praise is one, when you praise God, you enjoy his tender mercies. The only person that God said that he's a man after his own heart was David. And what was David doing? Counting the blessings of God. Worshipping God. He made more mistakes than even Moses. But he enjoyed more grace. Uh -uh. The only mistake you know, Moses did was hitting the rock. Nothing else. But David, he killed, he stole somebody's wife, he married many wives, but still God said, I have loved David. With my own oil have I anointed him. What was different about him? He was a praiser. He was a worshiper. He had a book of chronicles, you know, a book of the acts of God. So as we praise him, his tender mercy shall be upon us. So in case you have your offering, your tithe, lift it up in the presence of God. 0722-712918. Let the tender of mercies of God locate in the work of your hands. Pray that prayer. Lord, let your mercy locate the work of my hands. When the mercy of God is shown towards you, men deal with you with softness. My God, that they overlook your offenses. Father, I pray for every gift and every giver that your tender mercies shall be released towards them. There be any other altar that was speaking cruelty, lack of dignity, you know, instruments of cruelty that were employed against them. Let your tender masses turn around the battle in their favor. In Jesus' name, I speak a blessing upon your gift and upon the giver. In Jesus' name, and now may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ.
Amen. We said there are three ways God blesses you. Number one, through his blessing that makes rich. Number two, through inheritance. And number three, through wealth transfer. Let the blessing of the Lord be upon you. Let your inheritance be given in Jesus' name. And above all, let the wealth that the wicked have for you be transferred to you. Let your helpers that were poisoned remember you again. Whoever owes you money and they were poisoned and they decided they will not give it back to you, let it be given to you expressly by the masses of God. Stand up on your feet in the presence of God. Those watching us online, God bless you. God do you good. In case you're not born again, receive Jesus as Lord and Savior. Amen. God bless you. God do you good. You can keep on your way out as we allow the third service to come. Bwana asifiwe sana. My name is Reverend Ruth Wamoyo on Instagram, on Facebook, on Twitter, and on YouTube. All you need to do is just go to my page, like, and follow me. And to my YouTube channel, I'm Ruth Wamoyo. Just go there and hit the red subscribe button. You will receive the latest music, the sermons, the gorgeous woman show, divine encounter, and all the services, even lunch hour services. God bless you as you do that.